All right, let me just preface this video by saying this. I have worked in SEO for almost 15 years. I currently own and operate an SEO agency and an SEO training company. I, more than anyone else on this planet, wants to see SEO succeed. So for me to make this video and this statement, it's a big deal. This is not another SEO is dead prophecy. This is simply an experienced person with a vested interest in this industry who is doing work every single day, looking around and seeing what's happening around us. SEO has changed dramatically. It is not a good fit for most businesses anymore. And if you want to succeed either as an SEO service provider or a business who is looking to leverage organic traffic, you have to understand the nuances. SEO is not dead. As long as people are using search engines, there will be SEO as a profession. But understanding those nuances, understanding those opportunities is critical to your success. Otherwise, as a business owner, you'll either just be wasting resources on SEO or as an SEO service provider, you will run your business into the ground. So in this video, I'm going to run you through examples of different types types of searches in different industries to show you how SEO has changed and why it's no longer a good investment for a majority of companies. Then I'm going to show you how to adapt your SEO strategy for 2023 and beyond, whether you are an SEO service provider like an agency, or you are just looking to get more customers for your website through organic search. This is a big, important, loaded video. So buckle up. Let's get into it. Back in 2015, I wrote a post for the Moz blog. In that post, what I essentially argued was that SEOs are way too focused on Google. We're essentially Google optimizers as opposed to search engine optimizers because there were other platforms that were emerging like Pinterest, like Amazon, like YouTube that were search engines in themselves and provided a much better search result and experience for people looking for that sort of thing. Like Amazon, for example, people go to Amazon and search directly for products because people are looking for Amazon's experience in terms of one check clickouts, in terms of reviews, all that stuff. Same thing with YouTube. People go to YouTube to search for stuff when they are looking for video results, for how to's, things along that nature. All of that still stands still in 2023 and beyond. But what has really piqued my attention is really more me as a searcher, a user of the Google product, seeing how the search results have changed and how they've just gotten unhelpful. A lot of what I'm gonna talk about in this video is an extension of what I was talking about in 2015, which is just a fracturing of the search market share. And really Google facing this massive problem, which is the inability to serve good results for people anymore. Why? Well, number one is that there's too much content in the search. Google's just having a difficult time providing good search results for people. And we see this coming to fruition in Google's helpful content update. This was essentially a PR update from Google. All they really talked about was just providing helpful content, better content, blah, blah, blah. But reading in between the lines, what I see is that we are on the precipice of AI adoption for a lot of things, specifically content generation. Google is already saturated. There's too many results and that's from humans creating content. What about when we can push a button and we can spin off millions and trillions of pages using AI that is essentially indecipherable from human written content. How does then Google know what to rank and index? Well, they don't. So we're already seeing all these problems with Google search results and we haven't even hit an AI yet. What about when AI takes over and humans are no longer creating content and content is just auto dynamically generated? Then what happens to Google search results? They go to crap. Number two is that SEO as an industry has just eroded the search results. Even though Google was the one who told us SEOs that we needed to create content and create good experiences for searchers to get indexed and ranked in search results, we of course have taken this to another level, which is just cranking out content incessantly, building new pages that may or may not provide any value to searchers. We have also, of course, figured out how to game the algorithm and get that content to rank, whether or not it is the best result for that search or not. We know how to beat the algorithm, so we do it. So with these two things combined, a bunch of bad content that's being generated essentially infinitely, and also combined with the fact that SEOs know how to game this and get this content to rank, we're now left with a subpar product, which at the end of the day is all that matters for Google. Google is only successful if they can keep users coming back to keep using searches. Otherwise, their entire model crumbles, they can't sell ad space because they have no attention. They have nobody using the search engine. Now, fear not because we are a long way away from that. But in my opinion, that's what's on the near horizon for search engine optimization. And I want to showcase this to you by going back and being a user in Google. Whenever I have any sort of questions about SEO, what I always do is go back to the searcher because ultimately Google doesn't care about SEOs. They care about Google product users, which are searchers. So I always put myself in the shoes of the searcher. If I'm looking for X, is Google providing me the right results, something that's useful and helpful, or do I need to go somewhere else? So let's jump over to my computer and take a look at a few examples. Let's start with e-commerce because surely e-commerce is still a good fit for SEO. Let's put this into context. So I just got invited to a friend's wedding. It is here in Miami. It is in the summertime and all I have to wear are dark suits. And if you've ever been to Miami in the summertime, you know that like if I walk outside right now, I'm dripping with sweat. It is literally like walking into a sauna. I can't wear my, my black suit out there. I will literally roast. So I have to look for summer suits, lightweight suits, things like that. So where do I start my search? If I go to Google, type in something like summer suits for men. So let's 
let's dive in and really start to analyze the search here. The first four, right? I'm looking for summer suits for men. Very clear about that. None of the first four ads have anything to do with that. So immediately scrolling on by. I then get into Jose Banks, Josephe Banks. I don't even know how to pronounce it because I don't like their shit. I don't like their suits. A little bit too old for me. Not my style. We get into Amazon. Probably not going to buy a suit on Amazon. Amazon just ranks because it's so dominant. And then we get into these roundup listicle articles, right? And traditionally, when I think back in the day, I think GQ, I used to go directly to GQ looking for these types of roundup articles. But what they've really turned into now is essentially just product placements. These are pretty much all PR placements at the very high level. Whenever I see Esquire, GQ, Men's Health, things like that, these are either affiliate links or these are just curated in terms of these brands are paying for them to be in here because these articles are getting a lot of attention. It's essentially like PR. So I know this is a searcher. I know this is a user. And the point that I'm trying to make is that Google is no longer a good fit for that top funnel discovery search for e-commerce, which is so, 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 so important. It's that first touch attribution that oftentimes goes untracked. And this is a big problem that we're having with SEO too, is we're misunderstanding these attribution models in terms of first touch, uh, assisted conversions, and then last touch conversions. So instead, what I did is I went to TikTok and I looked for summer suit ideas. I looked for men's fashion for summer suited editions on TikTok and Pinterest. And what those did for me is they returned a list of people, influencers who are curating this information and putting a lot of thought into it. It's not a curated list like this that's coming from a brand that's trying to sell me something. These are coming from people, from fashion people who do this every single day and are a lot more in touch with what's going on with trends and fashion right now. So from a top funnel discovery point of view, TikTok and Pinterest are 10 times better than using Google for this. Now, after what happens is then when I go into TikTok and I find the suit that I like, I then go back to Google and I search directly for that brand. But one of them that I really liked was Suit Supply Men's Summer Suit. I come here, I find Suit Supply and I go directly into what I want. And now I'm able to start that purchasing journey. And the reason why this is so important is because of the attribution model. So a lot of SEOs, right, or in-house SEOs or brands are seeing Google driving a lot of conversions because I, the way Google Analytics is set up just out of the box is last touch attribution, meaning whatever the last touch channel was, that's what's going to get attributed to the sale. So the peep, the whole discovery process that I just went through before that isn't tracked. And all we're seeing is people coming through Google and buying. So therefore we should invest more in SEO when in fact, those are just brand keywords. We're capturing demand. We're not creating demand, right? Creating demand would be getting people into the ecosystem, into the funnel through content, through video, et cetera, getting them to discover the brand and then come back to buy. Google's lost the ability to do that because there are so many brands ranking and because SEOs know that if they create these like roundup style articles that they're going to rank high for these searches, even though they're not overly helpful for the searcher anymore because of the fact that we as Americans and marketers ruin everything and just make everything about money and all those listicles are now bought. And if you go to Google search console and you check your pages, if you're an e-commerce website that are getting the most traffic, you can actually filter to see which queries are driving the most traffic. And I promise what you will see is that a lot of those queries are branded. So you'll be able to see how much of your traffic coming to your website and specifically your product pages is branded traffic versus discovery traffic. And I would be willing to bet that a large majority of your sales are coming through branded organic traffic, not from the way that you think it is, which is, hey, I want to buy a new suit. I found this website. I bought it right away. It's not the way it works. So what does that mean for e-commerce? Does that mean that SEO is a complete waste of time and energy? No, not in particular. But what it means is that you have to reevaluate your data and your strategy. And a perfect example of this is we had a prospect come in about a year and a half ago. They were a startup. They sell men's skincare and they had about eight to 10 SKUs. When they came to us, it was a pretty new website and there was just no way, there was just no way that they were going to rank for these big competitive keywords around skincare, right? Because you have the Amazons, the Walmarts, all these massive brands vying for those kind of deep bottom funnel keyword searches that a newer, smaller website is just not going to rank for. So what I told them to do was to go on TikTok. So they went on TikTok. They hired a full-time TikTok creator for the last year and a half. They've been building a lot of brand awareness, a lot of reach in the market on TikTok. And now they came back to us and they said, Hey, TikTok is going great. Now we want to do SEO because people are seeing us on TikTok and then going to Google to search for us. And we don't like the way that our presence looks. They're finding competitors. They're finding reviews. How do we build out our search presence to capture traffic from TikTok? That as unsexy as it sounds is the right SEO approach because what they're doing is they're using TikTok to create that demand, right? They're going out and they're creating content around their brand, around their products getting influencers to do so too, and then driving them to Google for that last touch attribution to actually make the purchase. And this is a lot less expensive. It's also a lot easier for them to capture that demand once they've created it on TikTok. And then once we finish that strategy, then we start to layer content strategy on top of it. And again, we're not going to do these lame ass random uh, listicles like they, you see on GQ anymore because they're kind of out of style. What we're going to do is we're going to take the same thing that they're doing on TikTok, that top funnel discovery traffic, and we're going to translate that to written content. So we're going to do it through the scope of somebody who is in skincare every single day who's a true expert, whose point of view that people actually want to see, not a bunch of just random skincare lines rounded up based on the opinion of somebody who's just trying to monetize that article anyways. So let's talk about another industry now. Let's talk about B2B 
B2B SaaS. This is one that is very often talked about in SEO. It's a, a, a niche that a lot of agencies want to focus on because it's believed to be a lot of traffic and a lot of volume and a lot of success in terms of driving customers for B2B SaaS companies. So a company like HubSpot, a company like Marketo. HubSpot's actually a probably pretty good example of a company that kind of pioneered the B2B SaaS SEO model for what they did for themselves with just this amount of content generation. So when it comes to the B2B SaaS journey, it's not unlike that of e-commerce where trying to rank for, you know, if you sell jeans, trying to rank for like jeans, men's jeans is just out of the question because you're going to be competing against the, the likes of like Gap and all these massive brands that are just entrenched for those bottom funnel keywords. So instead you take backdoor opportunities, you create new products, you create content around it, etc. B2B SaaS is taking this to a whole new level when it comes to content creation because it's very similar. If you try and rank for, you know, best CRM or CRM software, you're going to hit the Capterra's, you're going to hit the G2's. You're just not going to rank for those keywords. And even with that, the intent behind those keywords is much more discovery rather than you'd think. A lot of B2B SaaS conversions come from people that are looking for brand or coming through content that are then convinced and influenced by the problem solving on that content, get an ecosystem and then convert over time. This is another model that SEOs have just beaten to absolute shit and beaten into the ground. And I'm not the only one who's felt like this. This is the CEO of Animals. She posted this week that she stepped down. If you're not, I'm not familiar with Animals, one of my favorite content and SEO marketing agencies out there, they do full content creation specifically for B2B SaaS. Tremendous, tremendous job of the content that they create there. Really, really, really good brand, really good brand to watch if you're an agency as well. Well, she resigned as CEO of Animals this week. And one of the things that she noted here, you know, she says a lot of great things about the company, but she said, I became CEO of Animals to evolve content marketing, which I believe has plateaued in B2B SaaS. So she kind of goes on and, and to talk about a little bit how this content's plateaued and what she's transitioning to next to. And, you know, I don't think she was specifically talking about this. I just picked this out because this has been front of mind for me for a while. And that's SEOs have destroyed this industry because every single SEO strategy for any sort of B2B SaaS company is just fart out content, fart out content, fart out content. Essentially the HubSpot model. And this content over time has just gotten less and less helpful, less and less relevant. And it's just not a good acquisition channel anymore for B2B SaaS companies. SEO is not good for B2B SaaS companies. There's so many other things that you couldn't effectively be doing more to not only acquire customers, but to, again, to build that demand out there than just creating blog content, specifically video. So again, does this mean that you should not do SEO, should not invest in SEO or do any sort of SEO if you're to be a B2B SaaS company? No, not necessarily. But you have to understand where you are in comparison to the market. If you're just getting started, no, absolutely not. Do not do SEO. If you've got the authority, if you've got the reach, if you've got the writers, if you've got a bit of a platform to stand on in terms of your company being seen as an actual expert in the space, which would mean people would want to consume your content, then yes, SEO is going to be a much better fit for you. You're going to be able to compete for these terms. You're going to be able to beat out some of this content and you'll be able to create your own voice. And that's key here too. And this is where I think SEO has gone tremendously awry because we as SEO just want to create, create, create without focusing on, I don't want to say the quality of it, but it's really the authority of it. If you want to stand out on today's internet, whether you're uh, an e-commerce company, a B2B SaaS company, whatever, you got to be an authority. And that translates differently to industries. When I say authority in B2B, it means that you are an expert. You're an industry leader. People trust your voice. You know how to solve their problems. If you're e-commerce, it's not authority in the terms of that. It's authority in terms of you understand what's cool. You understand what people want to wear. You understand the styles, the fashions, the trends. You're an industry leader in that sense. Your product is great. And same thing with B2B SaaS that your product is great. So what do we as SEO professionals do? And I'm speaking to you, whether you're an agency or whether you're an in-house SEO trying to get your own brand more organic traffic. Well, the first thing that you do, the first thing, and this is important, stop being romantic and adapt. This is, I don't know what it is about our industry people. And I'm talking as a peer, not as somebody from the outside throwing stones. I've been in this game for a decade and a half now. And there's something about SEOs that are so romantic about this channel and that you will literally live and die by this thing and go down with the ship with your head buried so far in the sand that you don't see what's happening around you. And your refusal to adapt, you're refusing to admit what's even happening around you is the reason why you're probably struggling. It's the reason why you're not getting as much organic traffic or conversions or why your CMO is harping on you about this or why your agency is stagnant, why you're not closing more. It's not sales fault. It's the offer's fault, right? You're just pitching it to the wrong people. You're framing it the wrong way. You're not working with the right industries. And a perfect example of, of adapting is just going back to the SERPs as a user for yourself and putting yourself through that user journey. If you were a customer of your company, what are the different ways that you, they could discover you? And are you currently building your SEO strategy around those ways? Or are you stuck trying to push keyword rankings or push content down people's throat that you don't have the authority to push and it's just not a good fit. You're just not going to beat out the competition. There are so many other ways to get organic exposure. It is insane. But if you refuse to admit that and to adapt, you will never understand those. You will never discover them. And a perfect example of that is that skincare company that I was just talking about. Thank you.